We played a lot of cities for the first time last summer, and I think people's perceptions of us was like, they're like these really intense, scary, like political people. You know, if you meet us, we're pretty playful. We don't take ourselves like super seriously. So that was kind of a surprise to us, but also it just makes complete sense because there has been some pretty intense headlines around the band. When we get interviewed, it would always be identity first. And then we try to divert it back to, you know, music, obviously. I don't want it to overshadow the other parts of things, but at the same time, music is so about identity, right? The therapeutic nature of music is definitely a universal thing, but there is a specific thing that this band fulfills in me that like nothing else does. The reason that this band works and the reason that people respond to us is because they can see the empathy that we have for each other. That's a rare thing in a band, where like the four people in the band really love each other a lot, and like their pains are mutual, their pleasures are mutual. So, take your time. so I'm Basim, I play with the Kaminas. I'm Shah Jahan Khan. I'm Sunny Ali. My name is Karno, and we're here to record a song for the series Shaking Through. Cominas have a lot of music. They've been around for a long time. It's punk and sort of slacker in nature, but it really is not easily pinned down to one thing. Most of their songs that I really liked are really poppy and have a sense of humor about them. So I was really looking forward to this recording a lot. When we first when I started writing this song, it was me on bass, Basim on drums, and Sunny and Shaj on guitars and Sunny singing. We spent a few days in the rehearsal spots, like trying to kind of force it, but it didn't work that way. And then one time we just switched instruments. So we got Karna Ray on guitar for this track. We got Shah Jahan Khan on other guitar. We got Basim Asmani on the bass and myself on drums and vocals. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm not even the drummer, man. I'm not even the guitarist, man. I don't feel like anybody's necessarily better than anyone else at a certain instrument. Everybody just has different styles, so different things happen. I think creativity kind of exists on the outskirts of what your role is supposed to be, you know? Most minds, creative or otherwise, will have an unfortunate tendency towards inertia. Any little effort that you can make to break outside of it will probably produce something interesting. If not, like, great, at least interesting. I mean, we trust each other, and we've gotten to this point where, like, you know, we can hand each other each other's instruments and just go. We're going on, like, 12 years, so we're just trying to keep things fresh and interesting, so we wrote a Brown Allman Brothers song. No, I'm kidding. Brown Allman. Um, uh, do you guys want to run through it again and we'll, we'll record it? Yeah. We yeah, can record sure. it, you guys can sure. come in and hear like sure. where it is yeah. cool. as of right now. Can you turn yeah. my vocal up a little? Yeah, can you turn his vocal up, Matt? It concerned me a little bit, but he's actually a really good drummer, has a really good feel. Doesn't hit very hard, but he hits consistently in a way that produces really nice tone on the drums. The major wild card was that anytime you have swinging in a rhythm track, you're potentially gonna have overlapping incongruities when it comes to how people interpret swing. Sonny's playing has a huge amount of swing, and that's what I think was happening with Bossom's bass. It, the bass is sounding kind of clunky, yeah. It's really pretty clunky, and so Matt was wondering if you ever play with a pick. Yeah. Because that might make the da-da-dun, 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 da-da-dun a little tighter. 
There's a lot fewer ways to play with a pick than there are with your fingers. Like your fingers can hit it in all these different ways and you get this huge varying tone. But as soon as you put a pick in their hand, the pick attack itself gets their rhythm better and the tone is a lot more consistent. So for the bass, we had our Fender P bass going into a Countryman DI, and that was going into a Golden Age Pre-73 into our Teletronics LA-2A. When they were originally setting up, I turned up the bass amp a lot, and I never turned it back down. So that's why the bass amp is a little bit distorted, but it's in a good way. I mean, it actually sounds really cool. Aside from it sounding more aggressive and fitting the part pretty well, it kind of like evened it out. There wasn't as much low-end resonance to deal with. It's just one of those things where something works almost immediately. The bass amp was our matchless Thunderman mic'd up with our U67 through our Gate 61A2 preamp into uh, Warm Audio 1176. So for this episode, Earthquaker sent us a Disaster Transport Senior, which is a multiple delay pedal and reverb pedal. We actually ended up using it mostly for percussive sounds. It has this like really nice modulation. So both the snare delay and the percussion delay are like modulating as they're happening, which is not something I do all the time. You can tell something is changing as the snare is being hit, but it's just like this slight little difference is happening as the delays are modulating. It just ended up feeling like the right touch. When we first started, a lot of the songs we wrote were about like dealing with like bigoted questions or people or just about like existing in a Muslim American community or like a Pakistani American or Indian American community. We were trying to be a band that would tackle these subjects because who else was going to do it? The fetishizing element of all that became very apparent very quickly. Like, we basically had a MySpace page with a couple of songs, and a Rolling Stone article came out before our first album was ever done, and it wasn't even about music. Me and my brother were both in the band at the time, and whenever we get press coverage, even though half of the band was not Muslim, we'd be like, oh, check out this Muslim punk band, and then like two Hindu dudes. We'd always be a footnote, and that like never felt good. Islam is a religion. You can't really call something Muslim punk. It sounds like a band that's proselytizing Islam, you know what I mean, like Christian punk, and that's like really far away from what we are. I'm not saying we didn't write songs that were like about Islam, but we also wrote songs about Bollywood, about other stuff. It just happened to be that those were the ones that people honed in on, that people still talk about. We don't want to shy away from speaking on certain issues, but our interviews are sometimes really intense. Other bands ask, like, why don't you play surf rock guitars anymore? With the Caminos, it's like, do you condone the attacks of Paris? You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just a different level of questioning that we get. Nobody wants their identity to be rendered upon them as a secondary to something else. Like, we bring our love for each other into this environment where we have a label that's placed upon us. It's a product of the culture. We want people to remember our music, and identity is a part of that. Sometimes, though, there's a lot of light being shined on it, you know? It sounded pretty good. The very end, did you get to that one time? I wasn't. No. no. Right. Should we just punch it in there? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, because it was, it was good other than that. All right, cool. Your, your rhythm's awesome. Thanks, man. Really, really in the pocket, which Front is awesome. over here. Yeah. For Shah Jahan's guitar, we used a third power British Dream boutique guitar amp, and that was just sounding like smooth and luxurious. That was mic'd up with a AA RA4, and we also had a Telefunken M81 on there. We ended up using a blend of those two microphones. The ribbon gives you a lot of like body, and the dynamic handles more of the high end. Really what that imparted on everything was a huge amount of muscle behind Shaj's playing. <coughs> sounds good. Yeah, it sounds huge, man. You know? So what do you want to do, it clean? 
Yeah, I think one take with a clean one might be cool. At least, at least for the verses, it sounds like the distortion sounds great on the on the main part. Yeah. Maybe just try like a a real single coily guitar, like something that just sounds a little more jangly. Okay. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Okay. I can totally hear you on that. Okay. I think that'd be kind of cool. And yeah. it would set up a nice, Telecaster. Nice dynamic. Sure. sure. The single Shaj guitar that plays throughout the whole thing is the Telecaster, but the muscly third power stuff comes and goes throughout in stereo pairs. To contrast that big and like luxurious sound, we pulled out both the Champ and the Supro for the other guitars. They're gonna sound kind of like boxier and maybe a little bit more aggressive. This is kind of like a nice sort of deranged kind of sound. For how big and smooth and round Shaj's guitars were, we definitely needed to get like peaky, brittle, a little bit unnerving sounds for Karna's parts. Might actually be cool too, maybe to try like the SG or something yeah, that's right. for this. The SG through the Supro with the polychorus. That's going through the whole song. And then when it came to his like lead parts, we had the Eastwood Airline through various amps for like unsettling, like high octave definition and icing on the cake. After we got both those guitar parts down, we decided to like play around with adding some 12 string to kind of like refer back to that pitched up octave sound. I think it turned out really well. And actually, Karn is a really good guitar player too. They're lucky, you know? They can be that band that switches it up. I think that people live more in their contradictions than their consistencies, right? And that will go for a band too. We're more interesting when you start looking at the differences between all of us. Because like the things that cohere us together are kind of an obvious given. I've been doing this for 10 years, so I don't want to be Muslim punk and release this new video. Like, I don't want that. I want to be the Kaminas put out a video, you know? I want people to remember who we are. This idea also of, like, being, like, a political band, like, what does that mean? Your art is going to be about your life. If it's good and honest and stuff, like, you're going to talk about your identity and stuff. It's not political. It's just what it is. I love making music with these people because they're my brothers, you know? That connection's really deep. And it sucks to want to do something out of a place of love, but to have it understood as a reaction to tragedy. What are your lyrics for the second verse? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Can you play the second verse again? Do you want to just riff on the whole thing? Should we just let you just sing through it a bunch? Yeah, sure. Yeah. If that's how you normally develop it, it's just by singing it over and over again? Yeah. We might as well do that. Sometimes, you know, weeks after I write something, I'll come yeah. back to it and then be like, oh, like, that's what this song was about. As I'm writing it, I'm just so involved that I don't even know whatever's coming out of me. We don't want to get stuck into just, like, talking about politics and stuff like that because we make music to kind of escape from whatever's going on in the world. You want to be out in the streets, and like we very much are at times. But it is nice to be able to like express yourself and be creative and know that like maybe it's helpful for the people that are actually like doing important shit. It's weird, like, because you have to take on that role in a way, because there are fans of ours that for better or for worse, look up to us because we are that brown band. That's real, and it helps people out. You kind of got to fly that flag. This next record, there are like very politically charged songs, but there's a balance. I think we deserve to be able to like make something lighthearted and that like helps us escape and helps other people do the same. What's on your mind? Let me know what's happening. Sounds good. That's good, yeah. I feel like you should just sing it like a whole mess. 
Really just yeah. so that you're not even thinking about it. And actually, at a certain point, you should take it off of your phone and put it on paper, just so you're not always looking down. Yeah, true. But it sounds great. Cool, cool. Do you guys like the lyrics? Yeah, yeah totally. the lyrics are awesome. Definitely. And mo and mostly the melody is like there. So. There's very off the cuff nature yeah. about it, but the melody was not concerning. The song is something of a mantra, and he just sort of clarified where the variations on that mantra were going to happen. Take your time going up the mountain. Otherwise, you know you're going to fall. This lineup has been together for like three years and we're just starting to like actually write together. You know, even like this song with all the harmonies. Take your time. You know, we're just starting to do stuff like that. So to me, I still feel like we're a young band. What's on your mind? Let me know what's happening. Oh, we use the same vocal chain for Sonny's vocals and every other backup vocal we ended up doing. For the group vocals, we just switched it from cardioid to omni. And that was our Neumann U67 going into an AML EZ1073 into our Teletronics LA2A. The Comina's music is filled with so many different things that I've really come to love. A lot of it is fun, a lot of it is expressing concern or anger, and I just think it's been great to see it all happen right here. Get to see how they approach things lightheartedly and seriously. Those don't have to be opposites. The relationships you have with fellow musicians are like pretty interesting. It's just a great way to get to know people that have gotten so close to these guys. You're there because of who they are with that guitar. There's something special there. You reach an emotional understanding with people that's just so rare. If you're shot through with that in a way, like it's hard to give that up. I very much feel happy with being a big deal to like a small amount of people. You know, we want to inspire people to like challenge themselves and their thoughts and perceptions. So to me, I already feel like we're a successful band. We've seen the highs and the lows, but we still like want to do it. And primarily, yeah, man, we're just like trying to make good music. It's been 12 years and it's cool that that's still at the heart of like who we are. Weathervane's Shaking Through series exists to support self-expression through the creative process of making and recording music. To download the multi-tracks recorded for this or any episode of Shaking Through, or to learn about Weathervane Music, the nonprofit that produces this series, you can follow the links on the screen or go to weathervanemusic.org.